Here in a random vibration test, the controller collects the vibrational response on the shaker table as a function of time. And as noted before, random vibration data should be converted from the time domain to the frequency domain. To do so, there are certain parameters which are critical to set correctly to get the most accurate frequency domain data. In today's lesson, we want to talk about the lines of resolution. Random vibration data is generally displayed in the frequency domain as a power spectral density plot, a PSD. This plot shows the mean square acceleration per unit bandwidth. In this case, acceleration squared per frequency, G squared per hertz. The calculation to convert the time domain data into the PSD plot is a bit of a complex concept, but can be summarized generally with these four steps. First, divide the time history file into frames of equal length time. And it's that concept particular, particularly that we want to focus on today as that relates to the lines of resolution. But the other three steps are these. Secondly, calculate the FFT for each frame after applying a appropriate window function. Third, square the individual FFTs for each frame and find an average. And four, normalize the calculation to a single hertz. Take that average from number three and divide by the frequency to get a normalized value. The first step in taking the time domain data and converting it into frequency domain in other words, to make the PSD, is to take the time domain data and cut it into equal length bins. And the lines of resolution play a role in determining the width of these bins, or what we might call the frequency resolution. The bin width, or the frequency resolution, is equal to the sample rate divided by two times the lines of resolution. The goal is to make as narrow a bin width as possible. Narrow bin widths mean that there will be more. Narrow bin widths mean there will be more bins across the spectrum and therefore a more accurate and detailed plot of RMS values across the spectrum. In our equation, for a given sample rate, the more lines of resolution you have, the smaller the frequency resolution or the smaller the bin width will be. As you can see on this screen, we have captured some of the general parameters in a random vibration test. And I set the sample rate to 16,384 and the lines to 26,000. And with those two settings, the frequency bin width will be 0.25 hertz, a quarter hertz. Why would I want high lines of resolution? Well, there are several advantages. One advantage is this. We've already mentioned it, that you will have those smaller bins. And that means you have more bins and you will have a more accurate plot when you're finished. And that's particularly emphasized in our picture B here related to resonances. But let's talk about one other factor first. High lines of resolution are helpful at the low frequencies. It gives you better control at low frequencies. One limitation of all vibration controllers is what we call the control roll off, which is approximately six dB between frequency lines. And control roll-off refers to how quickly the control excitation drops outside these test parameters. So the lower lines of resolution produce frequency bins that are too wide to drop the control excitation quickly. With higher lines of resolution, the control roll-off is much sharper. In this picture, you have the top line uh, in which 
the lines of resolution were 400 lines versus the sharp drop off of the 26,000 lines. And that's important because as low frequency energy is near a shaker's displacement limits, a sharp roll off requires up to 20% less displacement from the shaker. So it's better in your low frequency realm if you're using high lines of resolution. A second advantage has to do with sharp resonances. A test with higher lines of resolution offers better control of sharp resonances. For the most accurate control and excitation of resonances, a minimum of three resolution bins should exist at the 3 dB frequency bandwidth of the resonance. In this picture here, this blue line was the result of using 400 lines of resolution. The red line with 26,000 lines. And you can see that there's significant difference in the resonance peaks between these two resolutions. And so you want to, as a rule, choose high lines of resolution as you go through the process of transforming time domain data to frequency domain data.